today we're going to be looking at gurney flaps. Now, gurney flaps are basically small attachments or flaps on the end of your wing that assist with your lift. Now, I received some requests for this, which is why I'm doing a video on it, but I'd just like to acknowledge the work of a YouTuber called Gray's Garage. He's done a good video on this and he has a lot of other good videos that you should really check out with cool flow visualization on cars and stuff. And I'm going to basically summarize his work here and then go into more of my knowledge and my research and go through the specifics of how the gurney flap works. So in his video on gurney flaps, Gray's Garage talks about Dan Gurney, the inventor of the gurney flap, and how he originally put the gurney flap on the wings on his car and he noticed an improvement in lift, so effectively downforce of the wing, and also he noticed improved drag, a reduction in drag. Now, he goes on to talk about how the drag reduction is very shape specific and just happened to chance work for gurney. And that's very true. So let's get into what a gurney flap is and what it does. If we consider just a normal wing and we have a flow going past it over the top and over the bottom, these flows have to basically unite at some point. So they'll unite at the trailing edge if there's no separation at all. This is known as the cutter condition. The name's not important, but it basically means that the streamlines will reconnect at the trailing edge of the wing. Now, when we go and put our gurney flap on, which is our little lip at the rear, you'll see it on a lot of race cars, we create zones of recirculation. We create a little zone of recirculation on the front, and the common representation for it is two zones of recirculation on the rear behind it, okay? So essentially, vortices operating in that direction. And this means that the cutter condition shifts off body of the wing to somewhere out here and the streamlines reunite up there. What does this mean? Two things. One, we've effectively changed the camber line of our wing. We've extended it. And in doing so, this brings about part two, which is we've really made the wing behave as if it's kind of a bit longer than it is. And we've changed that camber line so that it's acting more like that. So we're really making it a more aggressive wing profile. And this means that with this extended camber, we can drive the flow harder. And of course the flow can't separate up here because there's no surface for it to separate off. So this means we can get much higher coefficients of lift than you would see normally. Of course, the thing to notice about this region here is that in the real world, flows are transient. They'll have time developing phenomena. So at the trailing edge, we won't just have steady vortices here. There'll be a vortex shedding. You'll have one shed off the top and one off the bottom. But when we time average the flow field, which means we basically approximate what it looks like if it was being averaged for an infinite time, this structure will form. So the tricky part about the gurney flap is, is that it doesn't always yield benefits. Now, we were talking before about some geometries not having improved drag. Now, the improved drag is very contentious because you think about it, if you extend the length of your wing or if you're making more downforce, you've effectively going to have more induced drag and that's going to make it more draggy. You've got a bigger component backwards because you're producing more lift as well. So you would think that your drag wouldn't go up. And Gray's Garage has a really good explanation of this where he talks about the drag reduction benefits of shifting this cutter condition off the back, although I don't believe he refers to it as the cutter condition, but also talks about the drag deficit of producing that extra lift and how they have to balance out. Of course, there are some wing profiles where you actually get the worst of both worlds. This shape here is actually a real airfoil profile, approximately. It's called an S902 airfoil. Now, as you may notice, the bottom is very flat. Now, this means that when we draw the pressure distribution, that we have a big region on the bottom of it really flat, while the top's a bit more peaky. What this means is that there's not really an adverse pressure gradient occurring on this side. So at the moment I've got the, the airfoil drone is the lifting configuration. So if we were putting a gurney flap on it, we put it on the pressure side down here to produce our recirculation zone here. And of course, because we don't have any adverse pressure gradient here, it, it doesn't respond well to the flap. Now, it was found in research that this could actually cause detriments in drag of 30% because this is a laminar flow airfoil. It, it tries to keep the boundary layer laminar over the whole thing. And the other consequence of this is that because this side's not curved already to start with, 
this flap is just not doing much to drive it harder. So there wasn't really a big increase in lift either. So this is just one example of a profile where a gurney flap doesn't work. So don't assume that you always want a gurney flap because it's not always beneficial. So that's all from me on the fundamentals of gurney flaps. Like I say, I really recommend you check out that Gray's Garage video. And in fact, his whole channel is really great to look at. Um, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and hopefully see you next time.